The name Lucifer is one that conjures many different images, the most common being that of Satan or the devil, an angel who fell from grace and rebelled against God, a figure who exists to tempt man and woman into sin, a universal idea that can be seen in numerous religions and beliefs. But in terms of demonology, Lucifer represents one of the seven deadly sins, the sin of pride. The book of Revelations describes a war that took place in heaven between the angels. Those who lost would be cast from heaven and left to inhabit the earth. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down. That ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the world astray. He was hurled down to earth, and his angels with him. This story has been interpreted in several ways. Some believe this dragon refers to Lucifer, the most beautiful of God's angels, but with this came an immense amount of pride, and Lucifer soon began to question his creator and everything around him. He considered himself different from the other angels. He refused to accept the universe in its current state, and as his paranoia grew, he believed God himself was flawed, and that he was the only perfect being left. In his doubt of God, he wasn't alone, as he managed to convince a third of the angels in heaven to join his cause. The first action against God was directed at his prized creation, humankind. God's interest in humans is something that Lucifer could never understand. To him, they were extremely flawed beings, and he would never bow down to such an inferior creation. He convinced the Archangel Samael to take the form of a serpent, and tempt Eve into taking the forbidden fruit, causing both Adam and Eve to be cast from the Garden of Eden. He then convinced a third of the angels in heaven to side with him in this rebellion against God, and when the time for war came, he transformed himself into a great dragon. On one side stood Lucifer and the angels who wanted change. On the other side stood a much larger army led by the Archangel Michael. This war would rage on for many years but eventually Michael and the angels who sided with him and God would emerge victors. And Lucifer, this great dragon, was cast from heaven, and all those who aligned with him would suffer the same fall from grace. There is also a telling of this story where Lucifer is cast from heaven and seeks revenge against God. With the creation of Adam and Eve, Lucifer was no longer God's favourite being, so what better revenge than the corruption of humankind? When they were created, Adam and Eve were instructed by God to never eat from the Tree of Knowledge. Lucifer would disguise himself as a serpent and seduce Eve into taking a bite of the forbidden fruit, and thus they would also be cast from the Garden of Eden. The story itself can be quite confusing, because some believe the serpent may have been the Archangel Samael doing the bidding of Satan. Others argue the serpent was indeed Lucifer, as not only does he take the form of a dragon, but he's also referred to as that old serpent. It's never explained in any detail, so it just comes down to how you interpret these scriptures and stories. There are some references that make it fairly easy to draw this connection between Satan and Lucifer, 
In Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, it says, How you are fallen from heaven, O day star, son of dawn! How you are cut down to the ground, you who laid the nations low! You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Above the stars of God, I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you are brought down to Sheol, to the far reaches of the pit. In Hebrew, the king of Babylon is condemned in a vision by the prophet Isaiah and is called Helil ben Shahar, which means the Son of Morning or Shining One. This was then translated by the Greeks and Romans to mean Morning Star or Light Bringer, and this king would then become Lucifer. This passage in Isaiah can therefore be seen as detailing the fall of Lucifer from heaven, how he aimed to place himself above God and take the throne for himself, but instead ended up in hell. Ezekiel 28.17 also mentions this fall from grace. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I exposed you before kings to feast their eyes on you. These passages show Lucifer as the fallen angel. It isn't until the account of the war in heaven in the book of Revelations we mentioned earlier that this fall belongs to Satan. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. No mention of the morning star or a fallen angel. It's Satan, or in Revelations, a dragon. With this transformation obviously comes a change in appearance. Lucifer the morning star, the most beautiful of God's creations, would have been a radiant being. But with this fall from grace and demonization, Lucifer would look more satanic. His once beautiful feathered wings would be more webbed, like that of a bat. His face was warped and twisted, and on top of his head sat horns. What was once a thing of beauty, then became a thing of terror, with images of Satan not even resembling a human form, more so a demonic goat man with wings. With this transformation into Satan also came the association with evil warlocks and witches, Peter Binsfield identified seven demons that were classified as the Princes of Hell, all of them associated with one of the seven deadly sins. Lucifer, of course, represented the sin of pride. Dante's Inferno does also have an interesting take on Satan, which I won't go into too much detail about because the patrons have decided it's a video I'll be making very soon. Dante's Satan is an enormous demon with bat-like wings and three faces who is frozen in ice at the very centre of hell. He also makes it known that Satan was once an angel of light known as Lucifer. Where Dante differs from the other authors is in the way he portrays Satan as grotesque, motionless, and unable to speak. A giant slobbering mass. He isn't the ruler of hell. He resides there as a prisoner, and receives the same punishment as all other sinners, which is very different to the Lucifer we see in the next piece of literature. The Book of Revelations doesn't directly tell you that Lucifer and Satan are the same entity, but this connection between Lucifer and Satan is one that authors and historians have embellished and developed over the years. One of the most famous examples of this would be John Milton's epic poem Paradise Lost. This narrative follows the fall of mankind and one particular angel. Milton's Satan was Lucifer, one of the most beautiful angels in heaven. He refused to answer to the will of God because angels were born and raised themselves. They had no mother and no father, so why should God have authority over them? It's better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Milton's character is both cunning and charismatic. Although Lucifer and his followers lost this war and were cast from heaven, he was still able to obtain the power he desired, as he would reign in hell with those who sided with him. Milton, in a way, paints Lucifer in a heroic manner, and you could argue this is because he represented Milton's own beliefs. 
it's no secret he wasn't the biggest fan of the King of England and believed he should be overthrown, as he felt a parliament would be much more representative of the people. Lucifer isn't too different from Milton believing that the angels should govern themselves instead of answering to God. In Paradise Lost, Milton frames God as a tyrannical leader, and those opposed to him suffer his wrath, not too different to how he viewed the King of England. Lucifer, for example, lost everything at first glance. He lost his beauty, his status in heaven, and he was no longer God's favourite creation. And yet we still see this idea that it's better to rule in hell than to live in heaven under tyranny. The war in heaven was lost, but Lucifer still achieved his goal. Although it's very common to look at Satan as pure evil, Lucifer on the other hand presents us with a much more relatable and interesting character. We see that today often in modern fiction. He's by no means a beacon of light or even a hero, but there is a strange fascination with his story. If we break down the fall of Lucifer, most of it does stem from curiosity, wanting to question the state of the universe and not simply accept the rules that have been laid out before him by someone else. If you follow the biblical scriptures, then Lucifer's pride is the sin that leads to evil and his downfall. However, if you approach the story in a less biblical fashion as Milton does in Paradise Lost, it's essentially Lucifer asking a series of questions about the world he lives in and deciding he doesn't want to be governed by someone else he doesn't believe represents him or the other angels. You could argue that's because the motives behind these stories are not the same. The biblical stories are a warning for those who wish to challenge the word of God for their own gain, demonising those who do. Milton's work, on the other hand, is an invitation to challenge a tyrannical rule or status quo if it doesn't represent you or the people around you. Lucifer is certainly an interesting figure, whether you feel like you can understand the reasoning behind his actions or simply believe that he is the devil. Works like Paradise Lost and even the more recent Lucifer TV show at least ask the question, is he really that evil? The answer lies with you, but I'm sure some of you will let me know. As always, I've been your host, Mythology and Fiction Explained.